Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. During the pandemic, many people didn't have food and they were stranded and people were sending messages for people to help them to assist. And I believe by the Spirit of God, as a Christian, you should assist people, especially if you have. He says to Abraham, I've made you, I've blessed you, and I've made you a blessing. So we're blessed to be a blessing. But I know one area everybody will be tested is in food and drink. That food and drink means basic needs. And like the earlier um, minister said, as regards in 1 Samuel 17, the widow of Zarephath, she only had a handful left to eat for her and her son and die. She didn't go to beg from anybody. She was willing to die. I, I'll, I'll tell, um, I think I, I said this maybe last week, I'm not sure, but I'll recount an event that happened in my life. At one time, I was not working, so all I was doing was studying the Bible I guess that year I must have read the Bible in and out, in and out, in and out. And it got to a stage I didn't have money to feed. And I had read Matthew 6 that says, Take no thought for your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, and what you put on. The God that feeds the birds and clothes the grass will definitely feed you and clothe you, for you have more value than the grass and even the birds put together. And I remember I didn't have any money. I remember my neighbor was owing me quite some amount of money, quite rich. We contributed money to do some things in the house. And he said, Pastor, please do it. I'll refund my own part. So I was in the right, um, I was right to go approach him and said, we finished the work, we started working. Can I have your own contribution? And I said to myself, no, I'm not going to go and meet him. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any food in the house. I said, I'm not going to remind him. God should remind him. I remember about two or three occasions, we walked past the staircase. Oh, Pastor, good morning. How are you? We'll greet. And somebody would tell me, remind him of your money so that you can have money to eat. I said, oh, Matthew 6 says, take no thought. Don't even put it in any fiber of your life to even consider doing anything to feed, that it is your right to be fed by your heavenly father from heaven. So I said, I was going to prove that scripture. So I didn't ask him. So the first day, after a while, I was managing, I had some dairy. Then he finished, everything finished. There was no money. So the first day, I didn't eat. The second day, now my parents' house, I was living in Antonio. My parents' house was in Iluquid. So it was a walking distance. I could walk there. If I walked there, they would offer me food. They give me food. I said, no. I'm not running to my parents to go and look for food. At this stage, I have to begin to stand. So I refused to go there to feed. My sister's house too was across about 15 minutes walk from my house. If I'd gone there, trust her, she would offer me food. I said, no, I'm not going there. Let God prove to me that he can feed me if I don't have a father, if I don't have a sister, if I don't have a mother, if I don't have an income. A whole nation was fed for 40 years. No one worked. No one lacked. If he has not changed, then let him prove this scripture in my life. And the third day I had not eaten. The fourth day I had not eaten. The fifth day I had not eaten. The sixth day I had nothing to eat. Nothing. Still at that time, I refused. I was weak. I was very tired. And I just felt I might just die. And I remember I was trying to write a note to my parents that just should in case I don't make it, they should not, they should forgive me for dying before them that I was proving the scripture and I believed I died well. So I was ready for death. And I remember I went to bed and early like 4 a.m. I thought there was an earthquake. I stood, I said, wow, I could feel the house vibrate. It was like thunder from heaven. And I heard the voice of God from the thunder. And he shouted and said, glory be to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill is yours from now on. Meaning I had passed an exam of food and drink. 
You won't believe what happened. That was around 4.30. I had to hold the bed thinking everywhere was going to collapse. If I thought of running out, thinking it was an earthquake, but it was the voice of God bringing his kingdom to me, bringing power and peace into my life for passing that exam. 7.30 a.m. that same day, my neighbor knocked my door. He said, Pastor, you should have asked me for the money we call, we're supposed to contribute for the project. You didn't ask me. Please, I'm sorry. I should have asked you. Sir, please, this is your money. He gave it to me. Then he said, you know, we're from Anambra State. We're doing a special meeting of Anambra people. I guess the, food, the dish was is it Onubo. So, so we're cooking special Anambra delicacy. I think it was Onubu. They cooked pounded yam, put Onubu, had malt, had corn. They brought my own. Two hours later, my mom shows up. We've not seen you for quite some time. I just said, let me cook some stew, bring beef to me. They brought it. About five hours later, someone called me, said, I'm in front of your house. I'm owing you money. And you forgot to mention it to me. I brought your money. Gave it to me. The evening of that day, my sister comes, said, ah, I want to do shopping for you. Please, I'm using card, not cash. Took me to the superstore. Said, buy anything you want. I'll pay for it. I picked, it was a carton. She said, it's too small. That how can I buy only one carton? The carton was full. Say, pick more. She said, you like granite. I pick granite. Say, no, take granite and cashew. Say, when you take cashew, not take pepper and not pepper. Just shoot in case your mood changes. I took tea. Said, take um, um, the caffeinated and non-caffeinated. Take spiced and not spiced. Said, just to spend. That was God. The next day, uh, a friend, a banker came. Said, Pastor, I want to treat you to lunch. Took me to the most expensive Chinese restaurant in Lagos. If I was angry when he was paid, say, yeah, this man would have just given me this money and fed me. Two days later, my sister came with her husband. Say, we just want to treat you to lunch, pounded yam and special vegetable. And it went on and on. And God said, I'm feeding you because you have passed for me to feed you. And from that day, by the grace of God, I didn't experience such lack again. I didn't have to go through it. Whatever you have to face, face it and overcome it. And take the glory that is set before you. The Bible says the glory was set before Jesus. So he went through the cross. Without the cross, he couldn't get that glory. The Bible says for Moses, but for the glory he saw ahead. If he didn't went, go with the children of Israel to identify with slaves, he would not get that glory. There's a glory beyond coronavirus. There's a glory beyond the pandemic. And you can only assess it during the pandemic. Once the pandemic is over, the door is shut. No one will have access to it again. The one first one we look at is the test of love, the love of God over every other material blessing. In Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, the Bible says, from verse 1 to 17, but I'm not going to read the whole um, chapter. It came to pass after these things that God did, that would tempt me, test Abraham and said to him, Abraham, now Abraham just had a son called Isaac, whom he loved so much. There's no one that gives birth to a son at age 100 that won't love his son. Even at age 50, if you give birth to a child at that 50, that's why they say, if you keep your children with your grannies, except there's a divine intervention, if you're not careful, or except they are very strict, those children will be spoiled. Old people cherish children more. So Abraham must have cherished Isaac so much that the Bible says that in verse 2, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Even God recognized that, ah, this love is too much for this boy. And get to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you. There's going to be a test. This is not tight. This is not offering. No. If your um, issue right now is tight and offering, you don't qualify for this exam. Forget it and settle for the lesser glory. God will demand your best at a time you need it most in life. And it will be a test. So that's how some people will be tested. At this time of pandemic, maybe what they cherish most that is most useful to them, maybe something like a car that they used to move around. God said, I need that car now. And that's what they will have to forfeit. And God wants to see, 
who do you love more? Me or your material possession? And when they pass that test, the scripture will also be fulfilled. That another car will come and another glory. I remember there's a couple, um, they were, the wife was pregnant. And she, they just said they just wanted a soul for that baby. Just, just never could say to avoid any form of miscarriage or whatever. And I remember then I was visiting their house. And I was in the house. And before I knew, they had put their television in the back seat. So when I got I said, what's this? They said, it's our television. It's our best. We don't have a car. We're giving you our television. We're sewing for our baby. I was arguing. They didn't even answer me. They just locked the door. Say, oh, yeah, yeah, come and start going. I had no choice. I was normally if they gave me the option, I wouldn't even take it. They gave that television. Now they had that baby, and guess what happened? That television they gave me was made in China. It was a Samsung. After they had the baby, someone gave them that same size, that same color, that same um, they say 30 something, 30, whatever, 30, the same 30 something, that same shape. But that one, the one they gave him was not made in the U.S., which I believe is stronger. The same thing, you say, is cast your bread on many waters. After many days, you will find it again. The seed returned with the glory. The seed returned with the glory. For some, your exam would be to let go. Some is not even just property. Paul said, I gave up my legal career for the excellency of the knowledge of the wisdom of the gospel. He gave up his career, which was a law. Though he wrote the New Testament from the perspective under inspiration as a lawyer, but he said he gave up his career. Some are going to give up their savings. Some that love gold, it will be their gold. I can't say what it is for anybody. Some is their freedom. Some say, I just want to have my financial independence. God said, no, you will not have that independence forever. They're going to give it up. There are people whose exam will be to give up what they cherish, what they love most, like Abraham. He gave up Isaac. And when they pass that exam, the Isaac will return back with the glory. Amen. For some, it will be a test of honor. In Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 1, that's also in the um, Old Testament. Um, the book of Daniel is after the book of Ezekiel. Um, Daniel chapter 1, I'll read from, it's also a long reading, from verse 1 to 17. Um, I will not want to read the whole um, part here, but the conversation that happened there was that Daniel was captured. The king Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, invaded Israel and they captured the Israelites. And Daniel was one of the people who was captured. And they were slaves. Now it was the style of the Babylonian Empire. They look for children that are very bright, very intelligent. They pick them out from among the slaves to train them in the knowledge of the Chaldeans so that they can work for the kingdom of Babylon. And part of the training, but Daniel was one of those who was picked. And part of the training before they stand before the king they must be fed with special delicacies. So they took him as a slave. They castrated him, meaning he can never have a sexual relationship with any woman in his life again. Then they told him to sit at the table to feed him with special wine. And Daniel said, no, I will not do this. It's a test of honor. A test of dignity. A test of valor. God doesn't want to use people who have no shame. People who have no decorum. Who don't know when to say enough is enough. Daniel refused to eat that food. And the king's attendant who was attending to them was very worried. And he said, don't worry. I will just vegetable. There was nothing wrong. Paul said all things are lawful. All things are not expedient. The Bible says put a knife to your throat when the king tells you to come and sit at the table and eat. You went to see the king for a request. Somebody has wronged you. You need justice. You enter this king's chamber. He's eating. He said, come and eat. You sit. He said, put a knife to your throat. Don't sit down to eat. Let him know that while you are there is more important than food. 
Say so some people will sit down and need say such people God cannot use them. God says I can't use such people. In the case of Gideon, when you look at the test, the Bible says he told Gideon, "I will deliver you from the Midianites. I will save your nation from the nation of the Midian." So Daniel was to raise an army, got thirty-two thousand soldiers to fight for him, and God said, "Your soldiers are too many." God is saying the church, the people in the church. For the glory that is coming are too many. It has to be trimmed down. The glory that is coming, what the anointing, those he wants to use in the battle, say we're too many now. So they ask those 32,000 to go and drink water. That doesn't look like an exam. If you're to put people into the military, you don't tell them to drink water. You do fitness tests. You do eye tests. They check your eyes to see you can see far. They test your stamina to see that you have stamina. They look at things like sicknesses. They want to be sure you don't have disease that will hinder you from doing the work of the military effectively. But that's not how they were tested. They said, go and drink water. Some threw caution into the wind, dipped their head into the water and drank. Some just knelt down and dipped their hands into the water to drink and they would look around to be sure there's no enemy approaching. God said, those ones that did that are the ones, so oh, sorry. The first thing they said, those who are fearful should go back home. And about 20,000 went back home, or 22,000 went back home. And there were 10,000 left. God said, those 10,000 are still too much. Then they now too, took them to the river to drink. It didn't look like an exam. Nobody facing an exam looks like he's facing an exam, but you are facing an exam. And the way they drank, God said, only 300 passed. So out of 32,000, only 300 were chosen. And that's the same pattern we're facing. My prayer is that you will be of those 300 that will be chosen in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Back to the test of honor. Here, Daniel, after he's been castrated as a slave, they now told him, come and sit down and eat. And he told them, he didn't say, you took my manhood, you took my honor, you took my dignity. Then you want to give me wine to drink. I'm not like that. Never. God said, that's my man. That's the man I will use in these last days. Men that have decorum. Men that have shame. Men that have dignity men that have honor. For Daniel, it was food. For some people, it's another thing. I remember I told a man, he's a married man, he wasn't really working, and his wife was feeding him, paying the rent for about five years, and I said, I think you've come to a point where you have to tell God, if I'm the man of this house, you have to do something. This will not continue. This cannot continue. It's time to say no. And the, he would send his clothes to the dry cleaners. I said, you're at home, wash your clothes. Your wife is feeding you, paying the rent, I guess. She's done enough. You shouldn't let her pay for the dry cleaners. And to be eyeing you, you wash your clothes and iron your clothes. And I'm not saying you'll be slave to your wife, but wash your wife's clothes and iron her clothes. And he said, I cannot do that. And the Lord said, this is a reprobate. <laughs> this is a reprobate. Those are men that have no shame. No shame, no shame, no dignity at all. Amen. Now, we're looking at another hint of how tests can come. Another hint of how tests can come. Um, we said test of love and God will demand from you something precious you cherish and you love so much. It may be a material thing, it may be a non-material thing. Then he said, there will be test of honor and dignity. And God will see whether you have shame or not. Some people have no shame. 
no shame, no dignity at all. And I notice God, God can't work with people like that. Then we'll have test of wisdom, test of knowledge. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, I read from verse 1 to 7. When Joseph faced Pharaoh in Genesis um, chapter 41, it was an exam. And Pharaoh said, look, I've had two dreams, and this is it, and this is it, and this is it. And it's a test of knowledge, a test of skill, a test of wisdom, all fused together. So the test is both skill, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, all fused together. So it may be a test that may come in your field, you may be a medical personnel, but it will not just be demanding of your skill, it will also demand of wisdom, of knowledge, and of understanding. Let me give an example. In John 6, 1 to 7, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread that all these people may eat? Now, there were 5,000 men beside women and children. And you know, a lot of times the women and the children are more than the men. So we can assume there were 7,500 women and children. So we're looking at a, a, a population of an estimation of 12,500 to feed. Now here is a Jesus that needed to pay tax and had to go and get a hook into the sea to catch a fish to pay his tax. Not really he was supposed to pay tax. Not that he was supposed to pay tax. No, he wasn't. But then there was a reason why he did that at that time. Now he's asking Philip, how are we going to buy enough food to feed these people? In verse 6, And this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So God is going to bring tests of skill, of knowledge, of wisdom and understanding. God made a statement in Proverbs. I'm trying to remember where it is. He said it is better when walking on the road to meet a bear. Now, I don't know how many of you know a bear. A bear is a huge animal. It's a terrestrial animal. Much, much bigger than a human being. Very dangerous. Big. Those of you who don't know a bear, imagine, let me put it as a male lion. He said it is better for a man to meet a lion, I'm using a lion to substitute the bear because not everybody knows what a bear is. But I believe an appreciable number of people know what a lion is. To meet a lion that they've just stolen his cubs. Somebody just came and stole the, the children. Now the lion is angry looking for his children. The Bible says it's better to meet that lion on the road than to meet a fool. Meaning, God can never walk with a fool. Never. In Matthew 15, Matthew 16, Jesus said to eat with unwashed hands cannot defile a man, but foolishness will defile a man. So God is saying that it is safer for a human being to meet a dog that somebody has just stolen his puppies and the dog is angry. He says it's better than to meet a fool. Then you understand that there is a test of wisdom and a test of knowledge to know whether someone is a foolish person or his wise person. So in John chapter 6 and verse 6, Jesus said this to Philip to know, to test him, to do himself knew what to do. And Philip in verse 7 said, 200 penny worth of bread can't satisfy these people. Obviously, he failed that exam. Because all he needed to have said is, Lord, even if it's, you, can, you can do the miracles, you can pray for them, you can bless the bread, You've done it before. They'll be fed. If you don't have that, you can ask your father to rain manna from heaven. Moses did it. If he answered Moses, he will answer you. These people will be fed. And if he didn't know what to say, Lord, like Ezekiel, you know what to do. If you don't know what to say, thou know. He asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, Ezekiel said, Lord, 
you know it. Thou knowest. He didn't answer yes or no. Because he knew he was facing an exam. He wasn't sure what to say. So what did he do? He threw the questions back and the answer back at God. Philip said, 200 penny worth of rice money cannot satisfy these people. If you answer right, the Lord will commend you. He asked the lawyer, which is the greatest commandment? And the lawyer said, to love your neighbor and to love yourself, to love God is better than all the sacrifices. But Jesus said, seeing, he answered discreetly, he said to him, thou art close to the kingdom. When he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And he said, some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are Isaiah. He said, who do you say? He said, you are Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. He made a statement, he said, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah. If you answer right before the Lord, he will bless you. When he asked Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon answered correctly. He said, because you have answered correctly, and you have not asked for the obvious, I will do this, do this, do this. So when he asked Philip, and Philip said 200 penny worth of food is not enough, and Jesus didn't bless him, meaning he failed in his answer. That's what it means. So there will be test of knowledge. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up, and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.